What's up, guys? So this is gonna this is gonna be lesson two for our mini series on uh, fundamentals of you know getting started in uh, um, you know beginner steps in multifamily investing. Um, in the first one, we talked about finding and financing deals, and now we're gonna talk about construction. Uh, I, and again, we're talking about this. This series is geared really towards distressed properties, properties that you're going to buy, you're going to add value. Hopefully you're buying it right because in real estate, especially with multifamily that you have to, you know, or any uh, real estate that you have to make repairs to, you have to buy it right. It's really essential that you buy it right. You don't want to buy too high because if you got to make improvements and now, you know, you you already bought too high, well, it doesn't make sense. You know what I mean? Because you want to eventually be able to sell it if you're let's say doing a flip or if you're going to do a cash out refi and it's a rental property you're going to hold on to it the numbers have to make sense you don't want to really uh, uh overpay for something when you need to add value to it you got to um you know invest capital in fixing it in making it better so with construction you know if you're not a con i'm going to just assume you're not a contractor you don't have maybe your your family your close friends maybe you do maybe you don't maybe they're not contractors you're going to have to get out and and find a um a reliable contractor when you're first looking to take down a deal and put it under contract you want to get estimates you want to get estimates on the work and what needs to be done that's really important so that you know what you're getting into because in terms of construction construction is a broad term Within construction, you have gut renovations where you're literally, it's like you're rebuilding the house almost from scratch. You know, you're stripping it down and starting all over again. You know, you're, what you're not doing is knocking down the house. There's some people do ground up construction where they knock down a structure that has a lot of, let's say, let's say there's fire damage. Let's say it's a really old house. It's just not worth it. Some investors, some developers will just knock it down, just knock the structure down and start fresh. That would be ground up construction. You know, it's like you're tearing it down and starting from scratch. Um, you have a light rehab. You have a you have moderate rehab. Our first deal was more of a moderate rehab. It wasn't wasn't too light. We weren't just painting and changing a couple fixtures. We were doing more things. We were doing flooring. We, we fixed walls, we installed new walls, so forth. So it was more of a moderate rehab, right? You have, um, you have uh, for example, a remodel where you're, you're just, you know, again, it's, it's, you're doing some work to it. It's, it's more cosmetic, just fixing up certain things. So construction is very broad, but there are different, there are different um, kind of departments. There are different, different uh, areas that, that, you know, different types of construction, all right? And you want to make sure that you're getting estimates. Before you decide to really buy that property, you want to know, okay, how much is it going to cost based on the state that the property is in, meaning the condition? How much is it going to cost to make it functional so that I can rent it out? Or, you know, if, you know, you want to sell it, you want to do a fix and flip. And does it make sense? You know what I mean? If you're paying a hundred thousand for it and it's going to need $70,000 worth of work, but the most you're going to get for it is 200,000. So a hundred plus 70,000, that's 170. You're all in, so to speak, 170. And that's not, that's not counting closing costs and all these things. But if the most that you're going to get that you can get for it, the, the, what we like to call the ARV, the after repair value, when you let's say you go to sell it, the most you can get for it is two hundred. So you're in it for a hundred plus seventy k for the rehab. Most you can get is two hundred thousand. Mm, you got to look at it, right? Does that make sense? Are you are in that in that situation that scenario? Are you essentially working just to kind of break even, just to maybe put a couple dollars in your pocket? You know, so you got to look at that. You got to look at that and see if it makes sense for you. See if it's worth your while. You know, you, you hear a lot of investors that, especially guys that people that do flips, hey, I'm not going to do any, I don't do any flips unless I can make X amount. They really look in, and those are people that they're going to make sure that if the price is here, they're going to try to get it down here. 
so that it really makes sense and they can increase their upside. They can increase how much they can make. Because if you're making, if you're paying this for it, whatever this is, but you get the point and you can sell it for that, well, that's not, that's a very small margin. But if you can get it for this, strike a good deal, and, and then now you can sell it for that, well, damn, you can make all of this in between, whatever that is. You know, and maybe maybe it's damn near six figures. So construction, uh, when you're when you when you now finalize that deal, you get on you you buy it, you're now gonna start that property, that construction on that property, whatever it is. If you're not a contractor, I'm gonna speak to you as if you're not a contractor. You want to make sure that you're project managing or that you have someone really reliable, trustworthy on your team that's gonna really keep an eye on the contractor and on the job and make sure beforehand that you find out that the contractor is licensed, that they're bonded, that they have all their paperwork in place, that they're not doing anything that they shouldn't be. And that, you know, you and the GC, the, the general contractor, that you folks are on the same page. Hey, so uh, John, you know, we're in agreement then that this project is going to take what, about two, three months? Yes, it's going to take about two, three months maybe have something in writing and and let them know how you're going to be paying for the construction and, and get their feedback. You don't give them all the money up front for the, for the construction. You don't pay them half of the, of the money. You pay them in phases. If let's say the first phase is they're going to do demo and then they're going to do some, uh, some work on the uh, uh, drywall and so forth. Let's say that's going to be about 10 grand. That's the first phase, let's say, and I'm just giving you an example, but these are the types of conversations you want to be having with the GC, with the general contractor of the company that you're gonna, that's gonna be doing this rehab for you. You wanna find out, all right, for this first phase, for this first part of the job, let's say it's gonna be $10,000. All right, well, um, you know, can I, can I pay you, say, 3,000 or 5,000 and then pay you the rest at the, at the end? So work it out with the contractor. Some contractors, they don't mind, you know, maybe you pay them at the end of the phase because they have capital, they can start the job, but maybe others, they'll say, especially if they don't know you, they might say, hey, you know, yeah, pay me something for materials and then so we can get started and then you pay the rest at the end of that phase. Never give a contractor uh, all of the money up front, not even for that phase. Do not give a contractor all of the money up front a lot of these folks, they're, they're, they're involved in different projects, different things, people are people, human nature. So a lot of people out there don't have horror stories, contractors that take a, 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 a client's money and then they disappear. They take forever to uh, uh, you know, finish the, the, the phase or the project. So you don't, wanna, you don't wanna do that. You don't wanna put yourself in that position. Have clear expectations, communicate with them what you expect, again, Put it on paper, both parties sign it. You know, maybe you want to have your attorney review it too, but just protect yourself, make sure, and, and then manage it. Not, you know, when I was in my first property, uh, I was a project manager, I would stay on top of things. I would make sure, see, hey, how are we doing? Are we on schedule? You know, we looking to, should we, we, we should be finishing this right by the end of the week. Yes. Okay, great. And then just getting them a check to pay them for that phase and moving on. Also, when you have a hard lender, you're going to do construction draws. Construction draws are where now when that phase is complete, you let the lender know, the hard lender know, hey, we finished X, Y, Z of this of this phase of this property. You know, we, we finished this part of, of the of the rehab process. They'll send an inspector out, check it over. And then the funds that you used, uh, they'll send a third party inspector to do this. Uh, and then the, the funds that you use to pay that, you send them receipts, you send them all, all the proof of what you paid, and then the lender reimburses you. So, uh, but like I said, I don't, you know, for these, this is a mini, kind of a mini course on, you know, beginners, uh, you know, in, in, in multifamily investing. On the next one, we're going to be talking about management and leasing. So now you've, now let's say fast forward, hey, you have finished construction. Now it's time to manage and lease your units. So we'll be talking about that. And hopefully you found this helpful. Please, if you find value in this, like the video, subscribe to the channel, would appreciate it. Also, if you haven't already, 
uh, in the description is a link to a free ebook that I have, which kind of gives a, expounds, it, it gives more information about the foundations of uh, things that people need to know uh, if they're going to get into residential multifamily. The link is in that description. Click on that and download it completely free. See you on the next one, guys.